The global context, Honorable Speaker, sir, geopolitically, global affairs are becoming more complex and challenging with wars and conflicts. Globalization is being redefined with reshoring and French shoring, disruption and fragmentation of supply chains and competition for critical minerals and technologies. A new world order is emerging after the COVID pandemic. India assumed the G20 presidency during very difficult times for the world. The global economy was going through high inflation, high interest rates, low growth, very high public debt, low trade growth, and climate changes. The pandemic has led to a crisis of food, fertilizer, fuel, and finances for the world, while India successfully navigated its way. The country showed the way forward and built consensus on solutions for those global problems. The recently announced India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor is a strategic and economic game changer for India and others. In the words of Honorable Prime Minister, the corridor, and I quote, will become the basis of world trade for hundreds of years to come. And history will remember that this corridor was initiated on Indian soil, unquote. Vis vision for Vikasit Bharat. Our vi vision for Vikasit Bharat is that of prosperous Bharat in harmony with nature, with modern infrastructure, and providing opportunities for all citizens and all regions to reach their potential. With confidence arising from strong and exemplary track record of performance and progress, earning Sapka Vishwas, the next five years will be years of unprecedented development and golden moments to realize the dream of developed India by 2047. The trinity of demography, democracy, and diversity, backed by Sabka Prayas, has the potential to fulfill aspirations of every Indian. As Honorable Prime Minister in his Independence Day address to the nation mentioned, I quote, there is no dearth of opportunities, as many opportunities as we want. The country is capable of creating more opportunities. Sky is the limit, unquote. Strategy for Amrit Kaal. Our government will adopt economic policies that foster and sustain growth, facilitate inclusive and sustainable development, improve productivity, create opportunities for all, help them enhance their capabilities, and contribute to generation of resources to power investments and fulfill aspirations. Guided by the principle, reform, perform, and transform, the government will take up next generation reforms and build consensus with the states and stakeholders for effective implementation. It is an important policy priority for our government to ensure timely and adequate finances, relevant technologies, and appropriate training for the micro, small, and medium enterprises, MSMEs, to grow and also compete globally, orienting the regulatory environment to facilitate their growth will be an important element of this policy mix. Aligning with the Panchamrit goals, our government will facilitate sustaining high and more resource-efficient economic growth. This will work towards energy security in terms of availability, accessibility, and affordability. For meeting the investment needs, our government will prepare the financial sector in terms of size, capacity, skills, and regulatory framework. 
Aspirational Districts Program. Our government stands ready to assist the states in faster development of aspirational districts and blocks, including generation of ample economic opportunities. Development of the East. Our government will pay utmost attention to make the eastern region and its people a powerful driver of India's growth. PM Awas Yojana Grameen. Despite the challenges due to COVID, implementation of PM Awas Yojana Grameen continued and we are close to achieving the target of three crore houses. Two crore more houses will be taken up in the next five years to meet the requirement arising from increase in the number of families. Rooftop solarization and muft bijli. Through rooftop solarization, one crore households will be enabled to obtain up to 300 units free electricity every month. This scheme follows the resolve of Honorable Prime Minister on the historic day of consecration of Sri Ram Mandir in Ayodhya. Following benefits are expected. Savings up to 15 to 18,000 rupees annually for households from free solar electricity and selling the surplus to the distribution companies. Charging of electric vehicles. Entrepreneurship opportunities for a large number of vendors for supply and installation. Employment opportunities for the youth with technical skills in manufacturing, installation and maintenance. Housing for middle class. Our government will launch a scheme to help deserving sections of the middle class, and I quote from Honorable Prime Minister's words, living in rented houses or slums or chawls and unauthorized colonies, unquote, to buy and build, to buy or build their own houses. Medical colleges. Several youth are ambitious to get qualified as doctors. They aim to serve our people through improved health care services. Our government plans to set up more medical colleges by utilizing the existing hospital infrastructure under various departments. A committee for this purpose will be set up to examine the issues and make relevant recommendations. Cervical cancer vaccination. Our government will encourage vaccination for girls in the age group of 9 to 14 years for preven prevention of cervical cancer. Maternal and child health care. Various schemes for maternal and child care will be brought under one comprehensive program for synergy in implementation. Upgradation of Anganwadi centers under Saksham Anganwadi and Portion 2.0 will be expedited, expedited for improved nutrition delivery, early childhood care and development. The newly designed U-Win platform for managing immunization and intensified efforts of Mission Indra Dhanush will be rolled out expeditiously throughout the country. Ayushman Bharat. Health care cover under Ayushman Bharat scheme will be extended to all ASHA workers, to all Anganwadi workers and helpers. Agriculture and food processing. The efforts of value addition in agriculture sector and boosting farmers' incomes will be stepped up. Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana has benefited 38 lakh farmers and generated 10 lakh employment. Pradhan Mantri 
प्रधान मंत्री फॉर्मलाइजेशन ऑफ माइक्रो फूड प्रोसेसिंग एंटरप्राइजेस योजना हैज असिस्टेड 2.4 लाख एसएचजीज एंड 60,000 इंडिविजुअल्स विद क्रेडिट लिंकेजेस अदर स्कीम्स आर कॉम्प्लीमेंटिंग द एफर्ट्स फॉर रिड्यूसिंग पोस्ट हार्वेस्ट लॉसेस एंड इंप्रूविंग प्रोडक्टिविटी एंड इनकम्स for ensuring faster growth of the sector our government will further promote private and public investment in post harvest activities including aggregation modern storage efficient supply chains primary and secondary processing and marketing and branding nano dap after the successful adoption of nano urea application of nano dap on various crops will be expanded in all agro climatic zones atmanirbhar oil seeds abhiyan building on the initiative announced in 2022 a strategy will be formulated to achieve atmanirbharta for oil seeds such as mustard groundnut sesame soya bean and sunflower this will cover research for high yielding varieties widespread adoption of modern farming techniques <coughs> market linkages procurement value addition and crop insurance dairy development a comprehensive program for supporting dairy farmers <coughs> will be formulated efforts are already on to control foot and mouth disease india is the world's largest milk producer with <coughs> india is the world's largest milk producer but with low productivity of milch animals the program will be built on the success of existing schemes such as rashtriya gokul mission national livestock mission and infrastructure development funds for dairy processing and animal husbandry matsya sampada it was a government which set up a separate department for fisheries realizing the importance of assisting fishermen this has resulted in doubling of both inland and aquaculture production seafood export since 2013-14 has also doubled implementation of pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana will be set up stepped up to one enhance ag- aquaculture productivity from existing 3 to 5 tons per hectare two double exports to 1 lakh crore rupees and three generate 55 lakh employment opportunities in the near future five integrated aqua parks will also be set up lakpati didi <laughs> 83 lakh sgs 83 lakh sgs with 9 crore women are transforming rural socio economic landscape with empowerment and self reliance honorable speaker sir their success has assisted nearly 1 crore women to become lakpati didi already they are an inspiration to others their achievements will be recognized through honoring them buoyed by the success it has been decided to enhance the target for lakpati didi from 2 crores to 3 crores technological changes new age technologies and data are changing the lives of people and businesses they are also enabling new economic opportunities and facilitating provision of high quality services at affordable prices for all including those at the bottom of the pyramid opportunities for india at the global level are expanding india is showing solutions through innovation 
and entrepreneurship of its people. Research and innovation for catalyzing growth, employment, and development. Prime Minister Shastri, Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri gave the slogan of Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan. Prime Minister Vajpayee, Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji, made that Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan, Jai Vigyan. Prime Minister Modi has furthered that to Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan, Jai Vigyan, and Jai Anusandan. As innovation is the foundation of development. For, for our tech-savvy youth, for our tech-savvy youth, this will be a golden era. A corpus of one lakh crore rupees will be established with 50-year interest-free loan provided. The corpus will provide long-term financing or refinancing with long tenors and low and or nil. I repeat that sentence. The corpus will provide long-term financing or refinancing with long tenors and low or nil interest rates. This will encourage this will encourage the private sector to scale up research and innovation significantly in sunrise domains. We need to have programs that combine the powers of our youth and technology. A new scheme will be launched for strengthening deep tech technologies for defense purposes and expediting Atmanirbharta. Infrastructure development. Building on the massive tripling of the capital expenditure outlay in the past four years, resulting in huge multiplier impact on economic growth and em employment creation, the outlay for the next year is being increased by 11.1% to 11 lakh 11,111 crore rupees. This would be 3.4% of our GDP. Railways. Three major economic corrid railway corridor programs will be implemented. These are energy, mineral, and cement corridor. Number two, port connectivity corridors. And number three, high traffic density corridors. The projects have been identified under the PM Gati Shakti for enabling multimodal connectivity. They will improve logistics efficiency and reduce cost. The resultant decongestion of the high traffic corridors will also help in improving operations of passenger trains, resulting in safety and higher travel speed for passengers. Together with dedicated freight corridors, these three economic corridor programs will accelerate our GDP growth and reduce logistic costs. Forty thousand normal rail bogies will be converted to Vande Bharat standards. to enhance safety, convenience, and comfort of passengers. Aviation sector. The aviation sector has been galvanized in the past 10 years. Number of airports have doubled to 149. Rollout of air connectivity to tier two and tier three cities under Wudan scheme has been widespread. 517 new routes are carrying 1.3 crore passengers. Indian carriers. Indian carriers have proactively placed orders for over 1,000 new aircrafts. Expansion of existing airports and development of new airports will continue expeditiously. Metro and Namo Bharat. 
We have a fast expanding middle class and rapid urbanization is taking place. Metro Rail and Namo Bharat can be the catalyst for the required urban transformation. Expansion of these systems will be supported in large cities focusing on transit-oriented development. Green energy. Towards meeting our commitment for net zero by 2070, the following measures will be taken. Viability gap funding will be provided for harnessing offshore wind energy, for harnessing offshore wind energy potential for initial capacity of one gigawatt. Coal gasification and liquefaction capacity of 100 metric tons will be set up by 2030. This will also help in reducing imports of natural gas, methanol, and ammonia. Phased mandatory blending of compressed biogas in compressed natural gas for transport and piped natural gas for domestic purposes will be mandated. Financial assistance will be provided for procurement of biomass aggregation machinery to support collection. Electric vehicle ecosystem. Our government will expand this and strengthen the e-vehicle ecosystem by supporting manufacturing and charging infrastructure. Greater adoption of e-buses for public transport networks will be encouraged through payment security mechanism. Biomanufacturing and biofoundry. For promoting green growth, a new scheme of biomanufacturing and biofoundry will be launched. This will provide environment-friendly alternatives such as biodegradable polymers, bioplastics, biopharmaceuticals, and bioagri inputs. This scheme will also help in transforming today's consumptive manufacturing paradigm to the one based on regenerative principles. Blue Economy 2.0. For promoting climate resilient activities for Blue Economy 2.0, a scheme for restoration and adaptation measures and coastal aquaculture and mariculture with integrated and multi-sectoral approach will be launched. Comprehensive development of tourist centers. The success of organizing G20 meetings in 60 places presented diversity of India to global audience. Our economic strength has made the country an attractive destination for business and conference tourism. Our middle class also now aspires to travel and explore. Tourism, including spiritual tourism, has tremendous opportunities for local entrepreneurship. States will be encouraged to take up comprehensive development of iconic tourist centers branding and marketing them at global scale. A framework for rating of the centers based on quality of facilities and services will be established. Long-term interest-free loans will be provided to states for financing such development on matching basis. To address the emerging fervor for domestic tourism, Honourable Speaker, sir, projects for port connectivity, tourism infrastructure, and amenities will be taken up on our islands, including Lakshadweep. This will help in generating employment also. Promoting investments. The FDI inflow during 2014 to 23 was 596 billion US dollars, marking a golden era. That is twice the inflow during 2005 to 14. For encouraging sustained foreign investment, we are negotiating bilateral investment treaties with our foreign partners in the spirit of first developed 
India. FDI is first develop India. Reforms in the states for Vikasit Bharat. Many growth and development enabling reforms are needed in the states for realizing the vision of Vikasit Bharat. A provision of 75,000 crore rupees as 50-year interest-free loan is proposed this year to support those milestone linked reforms by the state governments. Societal changes. The government will form a high-powered committee for an extensive consideration of the challenges arising from fast population growth and demographic changes. The committee will be mandated to make recommendations for addressing these challenges comprehensively in relation to the goal of Vikasit Bharat. Amrit Kal as Kartavya Kal. Our government stands committed to strengthening and expanding the economy with high growth and to create conditions for people to realize their aspirations. Honorable Prime Minister in his Independence Day address to the nation in the 75th year of our republic said, and I quote, we commit ourselves to national development with new inspirations, new consciousness, new resolutions as the country opens up immense possibilities and opportunities. It is our kartavya kar. Unquote. 